Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. I'm your host, Khadi Mohidan, and this is The Daily Show, where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. Now, this morning, there was a meeting held between Saskok CSA and the media, where they kind of had to brief the media about what is happening currently in CSA. So, Saskok Interim President Alex Kosani has confirmed that they will appoint a task team to take over the cricket body once the forensic report into CSA's administrative affairs is handed over. Basically, what is kind of happening is that CSA don't want to step aside yet and they don't want to give Saskok access to this forensic report without a non-disclosure agreement. And basically that means that we're back to square one once again. I think it's just they currently are discussing and engaging and engaging and engaging on what is going to happen go moving forward. Now, nothing can happen until that forensic report is seen by Saskok, and we know that CSA don't want to hand over the forensic report. The president of Saskok also explained that they're not a political body, so by them interfering in CSA matters, it doesn't mean that political interference is happening. You can check the video that we did with Fidos Munda, where she explains that very clearly. So that means that there's no political interference, and that means that the ICC can't get involved by banning South Africa from international cricket. But if the government does eventually get involved because of everything that is currently happening, then the ICC can step in and they can ban South Africa from international cricket. So my observation of everything is that we can't go forward and have cricket in South Africa or international cricket in South Africa until Sasko can see they clear up all their issues. So there have been some reports that England will come to South Africa for three ODIs and three T20s mid-November until early December um, with most of the games happening in Cape Town and in Paul at Borland Park. But I don't think this can happen until everything is sorted out. So that's kind of stalling everything that's going forward. Now it's a, a pity because South Africans obviously want to see cricket and I know that the local public wants to see cricket and we want to see South Africa back in action again. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to show you a little bit of, of the press conference and give you some insight into what happened in this press conference. I see Fidos, you've got the first question. You can go ahead, Fidos. Thanks, KK. Uh, this is to either president, but I guess more to the president of SASCOC. When do we expect the task team to be appointed and when will the board and executive of CSA need to step aside? Well, thank you very much. As soon as we receive the report, we will be able to announce the task team. We cannot be able to put the cart before the horse. And remember, the purpose of the task team is to access uh, the forensic report. So it is, it is prudent to not appoint people when we have not received the report. If we receive it today, I can promise you by Monday we'll be announcing to the public who will be the members of the task team with uh, the one that will be given by Cricket to add on, on the members that will be appointed. Cricket South Africa should step aside once we appoint the, the task team so that they can be able to be available on, on the basis whenever we need them and the staff, and they can still be in those offices, they can be anywhere they want to be, but we want them to step aside, but we don't want the cricket to, to collapse. We want the unfettered access to things that may be contained in that report and including them when we say there is something here, acting president or members of the board, whether you are independent or fully uh, coming from the members council, including, including staff. As soon as the report gets to us, the process will begin and will update you with Cricket South Africa on, 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 on a day-to-day -day basis. And especially the cricket acting president will work alongside with me on ensuring, in ensuring that uh, the public is informed as it is important for the public to be informed on, on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you, Box Kosan. Ken, you've got a president, uh, you've got a question for Mr. Beresford. You can go ahead, Ken. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, KK. Um, so if I could just first fo follow up with Mr. Skosana, though, from what he's just said, um, could you give us some sort of reasoning behind 
um, the task team only being appointed after you've seen the forensic report. Um, I mean, that could affect the, um, I guess, the, the public view of how independent that task team is. If you, if, you know, you look at the report first and then appoint a task team. I, th I think, Ken, is like the question of a chicken and the egg. What if we appoint uh, the task team before we have received the report? And what is it that we, we are going to say we're appointing them for? We may appoint the legal instead of appointing the accountant. So we must get the report and read the summary and the summary will inform us what kind of critical skills are needed so that they can be able to zoom into, into a report. We don't want to put the cart before the horse. We are, not, we are not determined and destined to, to do things in the wrong way. That is what the board of SASCOC has resolved, that let us get the report. Once we get the report, we will be able to identify the type of skills that are required to zoom into the report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kassan. Ken, do you still want to ask a question to Mr. Williams before I move on? Yes, yes please, Kaika, just with a... CSA are going to comply with what Sascock have said there. Thank you, Ken. Um, let, me, let me reconfirm our position. As I said, that we are in engagement with Sascock. We've been engaged with Sascock and we continue to engage with Sascock. Cricket South Africa had responded in detail um, to, to Sascock uh, around our posi position. Um, and I also want to, to, to state clearly that we, we have a fiduciary duty uh, um, to cricket as board members and what has been resolved unanimously by the Members Council, the highest decision-making body, that they would, one, um, that the report that they've received, the forensic report that our Members Council received, would also be made available to SASCOC under the same conditions. Now, having said that, at this point, we continue to stay committed to the dialogue and engagement and we even, we, we, we offered and committed to make the summary report available. Um, we would provide the necessary breakdown uh, by our uh, legal representative, and that opportunity will be presented to SASCOC board. So in terms of the report, we clear that, that the report um, has been offered and we had communicated with SASCOC um, a day ago and we look and we wait um, we await their, their formal feedback, but at this point, we are continuing to be committed to the process we're in with SASCOC, and, and we have provided um, certain recommendations that we believe, as a collaborative approach, we could advance and, and uh, not necessarily look at other interventions should we not find common ground and, and a common solution. And we as Cricket South Africa are working through, through, through our structures to make sure that cricket is played in the country and that we, we deal with the, with the issues around um, governance and, and, and making sure that we, we, we fix what is, is wrong. Um, but at this point, um, I'd like to stick to the fact that we, we are engaging and I would not want to undermine that process in any way. Um, but we have served our clear intentions of how we see the journey going and that matter we can talk talk about with Sasko. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, Shoni from ENC, you can ask your question, okay. please. I have a question for both Mr. Williams and Mr. Skosana. Maybe to Mr. Williams first. Um, Mr. Skosana's statement mentions that um, uh, the former president had promised the Sports Portfolio Committee that the report would be made available in June already. And it's something that um, Mr. Nenzani had committed to at that point to the media as well. Why exactly has there been a delay in releasing the report? And then my question to Mr. Skosana is, um, you mentioned um, that obviously SASCOC has a right to, to get involved in this matter as per the National Sport and Rec Act and SASCOC's own constitution. That's well covered in those two um, documents. But um, how does SASCOC respond to people um, asking why SASCOC with its own issues and with its own outstanding um, recommendations from the 2018 SASCOC inquiry is getting involved in this matter when they also have their own um, matters to address. Mr. Williams, you can go ahead first, sir. Yeah, 
thank you. Um, thanks for the question. Um, you know, in short, uh, like I say, we, on the advice of our legal representatives, uh, we have been cautioned uh, against re report, re releasing the report um, now. And I think it's around three issues, basically, for me and, and the advice that we received as a board, as well as a member's council that unanimously agreed that they, there is a huge risk in compromising future litigation. Um, we are in legal processes at the moment. And thirdly, um, the issue around liability. If there's any liability um, to, in that matter, we as a board and as an organization cannot shift the blame. We, we, we need to look at, at what that liability is and consequences for the organization and cricket in general. So based on, on that, we, we said it's critical. Our fiduciary duty is key, and we will work through it to make sure that we, 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 we engage with all stakeholders and be assured that as we move along this journey, there will be further um, st stakeholder engagement so that we can all get to the point. And most important, we, Cricket South Africa, is committed to doing that. There's no doubt after sharing the, the, the summary report and breaking down the critical matters with our members' council, they fully appreciate and support it, um, support it the, the, the way forward, and they will hold the board accountable. So, so at this point, I'd like to believe the good counsel we received and by protecting all parties and making sure there's fairness, uh, we do believe that, that, that we, we're acting um, prudently and was in the best interest of all parties. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Program Director, and thanks, Acting President. I'm, 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 I'm in sympathy with you uh, on behalf of SASCO. We know that uh, there are quite a number of legal issues that are contained in that uh, report. There are contestations that will drag for a number of years, and it needs to be handled in the manner as you are suggesting, and I'm sure that will also handle in the manner that you are doing if it was a SASCO uh, uh, report. And um, the legal um, issues can cost a lot of money. It can collapse that organization. We are quite aware of that. And I'm happy that you are confirming, as we also say, that we have agreed that we will engage and collaborate and try to deal with this matter as soon as possible so that cricket can return to normality. To Usistoni, Sistoni, there are two different things. We are talking about cricket SA. We are using the constitution of SASCO. And uh, if you need more information about the 2018 recommendations, please follow what is going to happen this weekend. The constitution of SASCO has been amended with all the recommendations from IPC, IOC, as well as ministerial task team emanating from the Zulman uh, Commission. You should also be asking why it was not implemented in 2019 and it's only implemented now. But the fact is all that has been addressed and all that. And the SASCOC responsibility is to ensure as the macro body, they come in when they are requested to do so, or they come in whenever there are things of this nature so that they put spot into a, a best space and place as it is required to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, Lungani, you can go ahead with your question. Thanks. Um, it's, it's for Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Williams, given all the turmoil that's, that's happened at CSA, not just this week, not this month, not even this year, and as long as you've served and been a stakeholder, is, is there no part of you when you've seen so many people around you uh, resign or be dismissed? Is there no prick in your conscience that says maybe it's time for you to consider why you're still in the game yourself, given that you're one of the longest serving uh, of the board members? Um, why do you still uh, feel that, given the weight of public opinion and media opinion about the board perhaps being dissolved and starting afresh, why do you feel that you still need to have a finger on the cricket pulse. Yeah, um, thank you. For, thank you very much. Um, let's put it this way. I, at the point, I considered uh, all things equal. I took a decision that either I, I, I move on or I continue to serve. And uh, 
I took a decision at the time that I would continue to serve the game that all of us love, that I'm passionate about, and I've been a servant for the game at, at, at various levels. If there was anything that, that I had, that I believe where I've acted irresponsibly or not in the best interest of the game or as a director, I would have had no hesitation um, to have moved on. So I believe that, that one, I'm so committed, I'm passionate, and I believe I can still contribute uh, to the game and serve the game. So um, I chose not to go. And, um, you know, in, in, we, we as a board, we as a collective leadership um, had dealt with matters head on. And I do believe we're moving forward as a collective. And um, the commitment is there to deal with it. Um, and I think as we move along, we will start recreating um, the confidence and the trust. And um, here, the, henceforth, I have, I've said that if we able to deal with the report in its entirety with our, with our um, esteemed uh, leadership at SASCOC, I do believe then on an informed basis, um, decisions could be made. So that is my, my position for now. I'll continue to serve. And until such time that the Members' Council decides otherwise, I'm, I'm committed to serving cricket and our country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. We've got uh, just two more questions uh, in this session. Uh, Craig, you can go ahead. Hi, uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I just would like to um, clarify something. Um, excuse me. Uh, Saskok is saying they want the full report and CSA are saying they legally can't release it. So it seems to me, if I understand that correctly, that's uh, Mr. Scorsano is saying you want the full report for Saskok. CSA are saying they cannot legally release it. It seems to me like we're in an impasse. Um, it seems like we're heading to a court case here because, um, unless I'm misunderstanding you, there seems to be two camps that have dug in. We want this, and the other camp is saying we don't. We're not going to give it to you. Am I correct? I just want to clarify that, please. Mr. Williams, you want to take that first, and then Bob Kosana next. Okay, I think I just want to reconfirm that we, as we speak, Cricket South Africa and Sascock are still engaging. We're still talking to each other, um, and and I think and and. Uh, I just want to say that we've, 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 com we've con continued to communicate. We've given up until yesterday. We have still communicated with SASCOC. And I'm confident that we, we, can, um, we can engage on those issues and move forward. Uh, Craig, I, I don't know whether you are reading too much into this uh, or you want to the end of this. Uh, Cricket South Africa offered the report uh, a binded um, copy to to us to be collected at Bowman's. The only issue is that we say we cannot be able to take the report that we are not going to be able to use as SASCO board. It will need expertise that are outside us. And, and that's where the issue is. And we have had the acting president of CSA saying that there are issues of which we have also identified the same issues that will lead to litigation uh, already there is litigation going on based on that report. So, so I'm sure that both of us as entities and organizations, as leaders, we will find a solution to that because a solution needs to be found and there is no other way other than to find a way that will accommodate SASCOC to put the task team. And the benefit of the task team, Craig, it will come to you independent from SASCOC, independent from CSA, and say what we were told is true or not true. And we put forward the following recommendations in order to restore. And here is the time frame for Cricket South Africa to implement those. And here are the people, I assume, who will be able to monitor and come back and report to them. It's as simple as that to us. It's, we don't have any interest. We want to be as far as possible. We want to get in and out and continue with our work. There are many other disputes in SASCOC's uh, federations 
that we have to deal with. We don't want to camp and sleep at, uh, at, at, at uh, CSA on a daily basis. We don't want that. We believe CSA leadership knows that they need to run with the issues after, after we have assisted them. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Let me move on. Zahir, your turn to ask a question. Yeah, Mr. Shana, I have two questions for you. Just um, as my understanding is that Saskok met with the Honorable Minister yesterday. Um, how, how did that meeting go and what was the what was the feeling of the minister regarding Saskok being involved in Cricket South Africa and, and wanting to appoint the Stars team? What was the, what was what was the minister's feelings yesterday about about that? Now thank you very much. The meeting went very well with the minister. He wanted a brief of where we are with these matters as he read in the newspapers. Remember when we met with the minister, he said he wants to be far away from uh, the sporting bodies, disputes and all that. The body that can deal with that in terms of the act is Saskok itself. So he wanted that brief and we gave him that we have met with the, with the colleagues from cricket and we are making progress and I'm sure he was, he was quite happy that uh, we are handling the matters rather than to leave the matters out there in the public and, and get a, a fuel and, and spread like wildfire up to a point that cricket will be ungovernable and all that. So we, we shared and we said, this is what we are doing. And today we'll be meeting with our colleagues uh, Mr. Bassford and uh, his team to have a joint press um, statement as we are doing. So the minister was, was quite happy and he will watch from the news then up to next time when he calls us to say how far you are. Thank you. Telford, you'll take the last one for this first session. Um, Mr. Williams, um, that part of the world that's not crying about South African cricket is laughing about South African cricket. How do, you not, how do you sit there and not accept that your last shred of credibility as a board hangs on releasing this report? How, how, how can you not see that? Alfred, uh, um, as I, as I um, shared with you this morning, um, we will we engaging. We, want, we will engage with Saskatchewan around the report. To the other key stakeholders, we will engage our stakeholders and we're advancing down that road. And... Um, I've, re I've referred to the, the risks and our duties as board members and important around liability. But be assured that we will, we will engage further with our stakeholders, whether it's the players, whether it's the staff, whether it's our sponsors and the media, we will engage with, with you. And um, as the journey unfolds, we will, we will engage further with the media um, and our other stakeholders. So at this point, I'm, I'm almost appealing that our meeting with Saskok around the report would be a good opportunity to, to get a perspective from our, our principal, and uh, we'll move forward in that regard. Thank you. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What do you make of all this evidence? We do have an article on the website that kind of shows you what has transpired in the, in the media and what has transpired in the meeting and the press conference on cricketfanaticsmag.com. You can have a look at all of that. It's a, it's a little summary of everything that is happening and a few tweets from some top journalists in the country. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning into this episode. We want to hear what you guys have to think. Obviously, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell for future videos. Also, don't forget to download the latest issue of the magazine. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.